Hell. Hell yes. We are in week two of the beta. We've had new patches that are supposed to stabilize things, make things run better, more smoothly, less crashes. Doesn't seem to have made a goddamn difference for me, but hopefully for those of you out there, my fellow battle brothers, that things are running more smoothly and you're enjoying the pre-order beta, killing lots of hordes and lots of the servants of chaos. We are hands-on with one of the new missions. This is Smelter on Malice difficulty, which is difficulty number three. And as you can see, we are finally hands-on with the Chainsword. This is the first time that I'm actually playing it in the end game. Like, forget the tutorial mode. This is me, like, actually hands-on. And I'm doubling it up. We're going full close range because I'm doubling up, for better or for worse, with the combat shotgun. Now, before I just start oozing about how much I love this goddamn chainsword, this weapon is so good. And of course, one of my teammates has a goddamn eviscerator and I'm so jealous. But, uh, spoiler alert, there might be some more videos in the works later this week with some hands-on gameplay of some other weapons, and maybe, or maybe not, the Viscerator will be included. But I did actually want to, uh, just talk a little bit about this combat shotgun, because I've played a lot of FPSs over the years, and... That is a really sexy shotgun. Like this shotgun is really, really cool. It's alternative fire apparently loads specialized ammo, like one specialized ammo shell uh, into the chamber. Uh, but it, I don't necessarily know what it does, like if it does a little bit more damage. Initially, I thought that it was almost like a sniper shot, like it would be a more effective long range shot. But after testing and playing around with it, that doesn't seem to be the case. However, it is a zealot's best friend in many respects because there are times when you come face to face with a special infected. Yeah, I'm still calling them special affected. I don't really know what else to call them yet. And you don't have your ability. Your ability is on cooldown and you either uh, don't have the health to s s continue maintaining or uh, maintain or sustain a close quarter combat fight. And case in point, this shotgun can really just go to work like it's full auto nine rounds and uh, the range overall is actually pretty good and there's a couple times where it has absolutely saved my life but for now i am getting my absolute ass handed to me i actually cannot believe that i didn't go down there we're definitely off to a shaky a shaky start but you know what two of my teammates are already down so you know what i don't feel so bad all right, so we finally managed to uh, get one of our special infected down. Oh, one of our teammates has already died, and there we go. There I go. It was only a matter of time before I went down, which is unfortunately. But, uh, I mean, that comes to the territory of playing like a pure melee build. You're really at the mercy when you're playing on these higher difficulties, and you're starting to encounter some of these groups with more long-range enemies. But you know what? Like, that shotgun is just too much fun. It is sexy. But really, I digress. The point of this video is to talk about that goddamn chainsword, baby. Holy shit. I love this weapon. And just playing around with it, I'm like, ooh, this is so much fun. And you can see there's so many times where I literally am just running around. And I am just, I don't even know what I'm doing. Come on. We gotta, what are we doing, Broly? We gotta chainsaw some of these fools. Oh, here we go. Oh, let's go. I, unfortunately, I got interrupted there. Got interrupted out of the animation. And you can see, I actually do this quite a few times. I was trying to master um, the actual swing and the sawing motion. Um, for whatever reason, like the natural inclination when you have the chainsword revved and you go to swing and you really want to dig the saw blades in is you think that you have to hold down. Like to, it makes logical sense, right? Um, but it's actually not the case. Oh, it's, I think it's time for the chainsword to go to work. And, and this is uh, some of my perks actually going to, into effect. And you can see them uh, being quite effective here. Essentially, the perk yeah, gives me uh, double melee speed when I'm below 50% health. And you can see it really coming in. It actually is what kept me alive there. 
um, in combination with uh, the grenade. The Zealot class, very effective when it comes to nades. And uh, hey, we just picked up a health crate, which is fantastic. So, so far, so good. And you know what? Like, I'm a little bit low on life, but at the end of the day, Zealot, like, my job is to put myself, or at least my play style is to put myself between our enemies and the hordes of chaos and the rest of my teammates, right? So if I have low health and I'm swinging away and I'm, you know, just doing everything I can to just be that human shield, then uh, that's fine. I don't mind taking a bit of extra damage. And uh, all good. We actually ended up finding a healing pod anyway. But as I was saying, with the actual sword, what I found really surprising is that uh, you actually don't, once you actually swing the sword, you don't actually have to continue holding down the uh, left mouse button um, or your attack button or whatever, uh, in case you're playing on controller or what have you. You don't actually have to hold down the button for the sword to dig in. The actual game will do that for you, um, which is fantastic. So really all you gotta do is uh, activate the special ability and swing away. And the cool thing is that uh, it can actually combo and you can do it out of a sprint. So especially in conjunction with the Zealot's ability, you can really cover quite a bit of distance quite quickly, rev the sword while you're closing the distance, and then just start sawing once you get close. And you can just see it's just absolutely chews up these enemies, no pun intended. And then of course I have my trusty shotgun as a sidearm, because let's be real, the primary weapon when you're using a chainsword is the goddamn chainsword. Hell yes. But of course, this is actually a, a really cool build that we have a, a lot of interesting dynamics actually on this team. I think this is a triple zealot team. And of course, this flamethrower just doing so much work. Um, there's actually a, a level that I recorded or a mission that I recorded after this where I went back. Actually, I retired the shotgun as much as I did like it. Uh, I do admit that it does have a lot of weaknesses. It is very fun to use and it is a very sexy shotgun as far as shotguns go. Um, but uh, it has a lot of weaknesses in terms of long range. It's really a one-on-one. -on -one. It's very good at isolating a single target and just doing lots of damage very, very quickly. Whereas the flamethrower is just so effective on mass groups. You can just see how much work on my uh, coworker or my, co my teammate is doing with that flamer. It is worth mentioning as well that this is actually my first time playing this level and uh, overall I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, so the new levels are Smelter and uh, Power Matrix and I had the opportunity to play both uh, multiple times actually this evening and um, I'm really enjoying both of them. Um, they're actually very refreshing in, in uh, above and beyond like the, uh, the 405 levels that we actually had with uh, the initial release last week. But uh, this is actually my first time, my very first time actually playing this level. So you'll notice that I am at the mercy of my teammates a little bit, uh, just because of my lack of familiarity with the level, what the actual mission parameters are, and what the different objectives are in each of the various rooms. So you know what, for what it's worth, I mean, shout outs to Fat Shark because while there's a, uh, you can definitely argue that the pre-order beta is, is a bit of a disaster. I mean, for I feel like for as many players that are actually able to play, I feel like there's two or three times that, or at least that's the impression I get from reading comments online and reading reviews on Steam. I feel like for every player like myself and, and these guys that are actually able to play the game, there's a lot of them that are actually having issues. But for those who are actually able to get uh, hands on, Oh, yes, that's what it's all about. Oh, my goodness. Um, I, I do actually really appreciate the staggered approach of the beta because uh, it's just given me the opportunity to break the game up into chunks, play, you know, the first, uh, I think I played the first five games, uh, or sorry, the first five levels and the, the different missions uh, for the better part of 20 hours, right? So you, uh, it does start getting a little stale once in a while, right? Which is to be expected. I mean, uh, that being said, I've really primarily been playing the Preacher and I do actually want to expand out before the pre-order ends. So you can definitely expect some other videos of me playing some of the different classes. I, I've tried 
tried them all at least once, but I do want to level them up and start to get some of the more um, specialized weapons for that class. Uh, so, for example, I have a level 7 sharpshooter, and I think my Psyker and Augurin are both level 3. So, starting to scratch the surface, um, and just to get a little bit of a feel how each one plays, and I do feel like the classes are pretty different in terms of their playstyle. The Augurin especially, and the Psyker. I've seen some absolutely disgusting builds of the Psyker. And, you know, some, some of these guys are running around with force lightning and just absolutely laying waste to just hordes of enemies special infected like it doesn't matter a little bit of a frame drop there but uh yes i mean overall i mean this squad is just making quick work just hacking and slashing our way through and um, one of the cool things as well that I wanted to point out is that um, there's a lot of like this game is oozing with details. Like not only do the environments like feel like give you the impression and the aesthetic and the feel that you're just in these absolutely monstrous facilities like this larger than life world of 40K and it's so immersive, you know, the enemy design, the voice work, you know, I feel like you almost never hear the same voice lines twice, which is pretty crazy considering you're putting 10 15 hours into a character um, and you know there's so many unique voice lines right and that's definitely something that uh, Fat Shark said is and that they were very proud of is that they had all of their sorry I'm just uh I'm just enjoying the uh, enjoying the gameplay like just with that shotgun like case in point if you my ability was on cooldown there and I literally have a fully loaded shotgun, 10 shells in the chamber, and just unload on the special infected, right? So um, pretty cool backup weapon, um, but yeah, definitely not without its weaknesses for sure. Uh, but overall, like um, definitely the, with the way this, uh, the staggered launch of the beta, I'm actually curious to see how things are gonna look um, in the last week of the beta, because I think there are gonna be a couple more new additions in the last couple days of the beta uh, next week. Um, which I'm looking forward to as well. I think there's going to be new worlds. And then, of course, on the actual launch day, when we're fully hands-on with all the features in the game, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how different it is. And, of course, it'll be interesting to see what the future plans are for the game as well. There's a lot of speculation in terms of, you know, are these going to be the only four classes in the game? Are there going to be subclasses? So, for example, instead of a, uh, a Zealot Preacher, is there going to be a Zealot Marauder um, or a Zealot Paladin or, you know, whatever, right? Uh, veteran Sharpshooter, is there going to be uh, a Veteran... Um, Oh, geez, I have no idea. A veteran scout class or something like that. Uh, I feel like the sky's the limit with this, and I think you wouldn't have to do much. Even if uh, each class had uh, multiple abilities to pick from and multiple grenades to pick from, I feel like that could actually change the play style up in combination with the different perks. Um, if you... if yeah, I, I really don't think it would need to be overcomplicated. And you can call like each um, each subclass has its own unique ability, you know, within the preacher class or within the sharpshooter class or what have you. So it'll definitely be interesting to see what the long term plans are. But I mean, for now, I mean, this game is so much fun. I feel like there's so much to do. There's so much variation in the weapons, everything. I mean, there's very few weapons that I've used that uh, I actually don't enjoy or that I think are maybe too underpowered. And I'm obviously uh, there'll be balance changes, I'm sure, uh, patches and just, uh, you know, additional tweaks that actually happen down the, uh, along the lines. But uh, for now, I mean, if, if I just want more, you know, um, the, the base game that uh, that Fat Shark has really built here, like this is such a good foundation and really the sky's the limit with what they could do. Out of my way, vermin. Load up on the grenades. Let's get back in there, Broly. Why are we so far away from our teammates? Goddamn exploding barrels sending me flying. I can't believe that happened twice in like rapid succession. I do have to say though, these two new levels, um, I think are probably my two favorite actually. Um, I don't know, there, there's something about like the, the actual missions and the variety. I think probably my least favorite missions are the ones where you actually have to, uh, you know, scan or like essentially do the data scan. So you have to pull out the device and scan like boxes and bodies and things like that. Um, I always feel like, especially as the difficulty goes up, those are some of the more challenging ones, especially when you have an endless horde that are just coming after you. Um, it's a good challenge, 
But, uh, you know, sometimes you, you don't necessarily want to bother with uh, all the objectives. You really just want to move from place to place um, and just deal as much death and carnage as you absolutely can. And of course, I do know that there's voice chat. Um, I'm guilty of actually not using voice chat, actually. But uh, I do find that overall, people are uh, actually quite cooperative. Um, I haven't seen, uh, I've, for the most part, I've seen a lot of collaboration, a lot of people trying to work together, especially for the sub-objectives, trying to find either the Grimoires or, or um, the scriptures, for example. I don't think I will ever get tired of that damn sword just sawing its way through. Oh, and this is, yeah, you notice how quickly I did that retreat. I'm uh, I'm definitely becoming more aware of when I'm seeing these situations where it's just like I am completely outgunned, outranged, and it's just if I run in, if I continue to press forward, I'm dead. Uh, it's just not, uh, it just doesn't, it just is not worth it. And this is a perfect, perfect opportunity especially when you have such a great cluster of enemies you can see that there was like three or four different special infected oh i don't know what the heck that was is it a gunner i think something was just lit my ass up like oh my goodness <laughs> i do i do love that though has anyone seen some ammo oh yes and I'm not sure if you've noticed, actually, for whatever reason, the subtitles, I actually haven't seen this in any of my previous mission playthroughs before. For whatever reason, the subtitles actually glitched out and it's just stuck on, we're outnumbered. And if you recall, that actually came up, I think, within like the first five minutes and it rides its way through pretty much till the end of the mission, which is a bit of a bit of a glitch. But you know what? I didn't get disconnected. Uh, the game didn't crash, so you know what? I'll take the subtitles misbehaving a little bit. Uh, that is completely fine. And yeah, here you can see me trying to experiment a little bit with that special ammo. So using the special feature of the shotgun, you load one special ammo into the chamber. And you can do that, interestingly enough, even though the, uh, the shotgun's fully loaded. So you can be at 10 ammo, essentially, and still do it. You're theoretically in 11. But what's interesting is when you do it, um, the ammo count actually resets to 9. And then as you load in the, the special ammo shell, it goes back up to 10. So a little wonky in terms of its behavior, but if anyone one does know what it does um, I obviously it doesn't increase the range it's not like a long range like sniper shot or anything um, it must be uh, some kind of specialized like more powerful shot um, but if anyone does actually know the specifics please let me know in the comments actually because I'm incredibly curious and here we are actually in the uh, final room and this is a really cool area this is a great last stand area um, just it, it's just one of those where it's like you do have a, a horde running like essentially coming at you non-stop you have lots of special infected it's just a really cool area as well and just in terms of its level design yes slice and dice baby haha <laughs> i don't think i'll ever get tired of that and then, of course, uh, you know, this is only the tip of the iceberg. I specifically picked the Preacher so I could get my hands on the two-handed chainsword, which I just recently learned was called an Eviscerator. And ironically, actually, I'm actually um, reading uh, some of the Warhammer books, and it was like, I just found out that the two-handed chainsword is called an Eviscerator, and, like, lo and behold, the next chapter of the book, there's a guy who's actually using an eviscerator and they refer to it as an eviscerator and it's like hey i now know that what that was so really cool that the community is coming together um and i'm already starting to learn more actually as i start to interact and make more of these videos uh, you know what the world the, the warhammer 40k universe is really really cool there's a lot of really cool tech um there's a lot of really cool games out there and uh yeah i cannot wait to continue digging into this game more there's so many guns that I want to unlock, like, I want my hands on a bolter. I've seen some of the, uh, some other content creators that uh, got early access to the game and they already have a max level, you know, sharpshooter or character or what have you, and they do have the bolter rifle. And I mean, the bolter just looks absolutely sick. Okay, here we go. I need to clear out some space, get my teammate up. All right, Broly, time to charge into the fray, baby. Oh, here we go. Be gone, foul vermin. 
you beast of chaos. Although I do think it's hilarious. There's a sniper that I think there's like two or three in this particular area. And you more or less just have to engage full Matrix Neo no mode in order to avoid getting shot. Um, they're way too far away. I think at one point I try and see if I can chase him down. But I mean, not with my build. It's pretty useless uh, when it comes to uh, trying to challenge a sniper. And they are actually quite fast. If you actually, there's so many times where I'm right on the heels of a special infected and they're like outrunning me. Um, and a lot of the times they'll uh, they'll run into other hordes of enemies. Uh, the AI itself is actually quite clever in that sense. Um, I love how enemies will, you know, run into other groups of enemies, you know, safety in numbers, um, or that they will actually, you know, roll or jump behind cover as well. Um, I was not expecting that level of sophistication because if you think about uh, another game that well, obviously I keep making the comparison to Left 4 Dead, but if you compare it like the characters, there's so much more variety in the enemies that you're fighting, right? Like you're fighting sort of your, your run of the mill zombies, but then you actually have a lot of enemies that are, you know, actual thinking, logical, rational beings, right? So they're not just charging at you mindlessly and swinging with like a club or a lead pipe or whatever, right? Like they are actually thinking, they are trying to outmaneuver you um, and they're trying to use the abilities. And then you have the special infected on top of that. Um, and then you have different dynamics and classes. Like, so there might be some human enemies that are coming at you and they are armed. They have a chain sword or a weapon and whatnot uh, in combination with those zombie characters, right? Then you have the guys that are actually armed with some type of long range weapon. Uh, and then you have the special infected. So it's, it's just the different blends of the enemy archetypes. Like that's something that's big in action games like this is how the different types of enemies that you can encounter in the game are being combined in any given encounter, right? And that's what adds a lot of variety to the gameplay. If you look at a game like Devil May Cry, part of the challenge with Devil May Cry is when you have character or enemies of different classes, different abilities, that are combined together in new and unique ways and more challenging ways, right? So if you have a character that's real or an enemy that really specializes in being, you know, in your face and just being annoying and it's just, uh, you know, a meat sponge essentially in terms of damage. Like you have to just sink a ton of damage. And if you combine that with a much more faster, agile character, and maybe even a character that can fly, like some type of bat or, or flying enemy. And you combine those two types together. So on the one hand, you have these, you know, bullet sponges or meat sponges um, that are in your face, point blank, trying to fight you just like this. And then you have your long range enemies that are more agile, they're more mobile, they're moving around trying to take pot shots at you. Oh. And that's what makes it for really interesting and dynamic encounters. And then, of course, you have the the game director, quote unquote, was the, the term that uh, the team at uh, Steam, actually, I guess Valve, uh, originally coined it. And, oh, this is so funny. I remember this grenade. We were surrounded by guys and like completely surrounded by enemies. And I'm like, oh, you know, I have, you know, multiple grenades. Why don't we use one? And then, of course, like ends up being completely useless. Oh, and there you go. That shotgun doing the work. And then, of course, I wasted my ability right after. Good times. And you know what's funny, actually, is that this is the first time that uh, we were playing this level. Um, we're actually in the worst possible position. So essentially, we're at the point where we've completed all the mission objectives, and you basically just have to survive the horde, so to speak, um, in order to actually finish the level. And so you're basically just surviving until an uh, uh, in-game counter is completed. And again, we're in the worst spot where the enemy can basically uh, come at us from all corners. The best spot is um, actually to wait by the door. Um, you know, you literally just engage Hordor mode and you uh, hold the door, hold the door, Hordor. Game of Thrones reference. Oh my God, rip season eight. Uh, but at least uh, House of the Dragon was cool. But I digress. So a <laughs> little bit of a blunder there. I got a little bit overzealous and uh, a little too. I was having too much fun just uh, swinging my sword and uh, was uh, I definitely did not take into account uh, my footing and where I was actually on the map. But uh Thankfully, it was a quick save and we're out of here. But yeah, basically right at the entrance to that door that we just ran through, that is actually the best place to make your last stand. But here we go. We, we, we've finished the level. Another fantastic expedition in, uh, into the world of Warhammer 40k Darktide. Mission successful. Well done, team. 
Oh my goodness, I am having such a blast. And as we get more weapons, more hands-on, like, oh, my love for this game is only growing despite its flaws. But in any case, that's it for this one. Stay awesome. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.